Welcome to Toy Hill Studio. My name is Kendall Kessler. Please like and subscribe. I put up painting demos and studio tours. And please check out my intro video. In two minutes, you can find out all about me, where I've been, where I'm going, what my goals are. Last time I did a, what I call center of my mind painting, where there isn't any definite subject matter. You either like it or you don't like it, just by how it looks. And I'm real pleased with how this turned out. I don't usually make such complicated abstracts. I tend to get more into real amorphous areas, but this time I played off some real strong angles. So I decided I'm going to do another one, and this time I've got lots of angles. And I'm going to see what happens. Um, as I mentioned before, I'm not really into color field painting, where you fill in each one of these very definite areas in the color. It's nothing wrong with that. It's just not really for me. So what I really want to do is play off these real sharp areas off of very soft nebulous areas. And I've got them in there very dark so that I don't lose them. I'm going to use the paint very thin this time. And I'm going to let it really, really move around and see how that works. I'm looking forward to this today because um, it's not typical for me to do this. As I've said many times, I mostly paint oil paintings majority, though the bulk of the work is the Blue Ridge and surrounding areas, and it's what uh, most people call Impressionism or whatever you want to call it, but it's unique to me. So doing abstracts in acrylics is something I do on YouTube, and I always like to do it in such a way that I really have no idea what's going to happen. I mean, I have a general idea. I mean, I've got this definite area of space, but I really just let things happen and just talk along the way. And like as I said, I'm going to get the paint really wet. So it moves around in what we call the wet and wet or bleeding technique. Let it move. And just go by what happens. And I'm not going to even think about each area either. I'm not going to think about filling in these separate areas. I'm just going to let the paint go. Let it move around and do its own thing. I've always really liked the bleeding technique in water media. It's really tricky. If you're going to do something, rep what we call representational, basically the way things look, then you got to really know your stuff. It's quite a difficult technique to handle because you don't know what's going to happen until it's finally stopped bleeding. So if there's something you've really got in mind, then you got to really know. And there's a lot of things that affect it too. I remember taking watercolors a long time ago and uh, one thing that I remember the teacher pointing out that most people don't think about is humidity. Um, it's going to dry differently according to the humidity. So there's just many, many things to consider when you're using this technique. And watercolors, period. I'm probably going to build this paint up because um, even though I hope to get some interesting effects, I really like building the paint up. I like to get lots and lots of heavy texture in my paintings. So I will probably change this a lot. But I wanted to do this right now, and I was hoping that I can get it done in this manner so that I can move on to something else tonight. Lots to do. And I didn't want to spend a lot of time afterwards. Lots of times I do. Didn't want a hand. God, I had spent a lot of time after that because hands are a tremendous amount of work. Even though it was abstract, it was still hands, period, <laughs> a lot of work. So by doing something that is what most people call abstract, I can just really move it along. So far, though, I'm not really interested in it. I have a feeling I'm probably going to really build up the paint, just go back into these areas. Because so far, it's a little boring to me. But maybe it'll start to get more interesting as I go. A little more color contrast. It's just kind of too much of the same thing for me right now. And it is moving around, but um, not that much. So it's not really doing anything really interesting. But I want to get this done. I really kind of want to get back to the Twilight Zone. <laughs> They're having one of those binge things, and I always like the Twilight Zone very much. Not just for the stories. I mean, they're really good, imaginative as can be, really interesting. I like them very much. But uh, as an artist, 
fascinated with the sets. They really did beautiful jobs with their sets in terms of the arrangement and the lighting and the patterns. Uh, not everybody, you know, gets into that. I remember trying to explain that one time to my mother and she just thought I was nuts. But um, there's so much to the care of arranging where the actors go, where how the light is coming in, the patterns, the different the juxtaposition of different value patterns. And as an artist, you know, that's that's something I'm really gonna notice. So even though the stories are fascinating and I really like them very much, I'm also just really looking at their sets. Oh, I like that. That turned out nice. I just want to get back to that. And I still have some other work to do too. But well, it's getting some interesting things in that there's, you know, a separation of the values, the light and dark areas, which is making it kind of nice. I forgot to put purple out. Well, I'll make some. And that's okay, but um, it's not really... I was hoping I'd get a lot of depth in it or something, that the bleeding would just really bleed in such a way that it would just go into the space a lot. And it's still a little bit of that, but not much, like going through this central area, well, almost central area, I have it off-centered. Um, so far, I'm not real happy. But, you know, it's only been a six minutes. Can't expect too much in six minutes. But I might just let it just be a few minutes. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, there's nothing wrong with it, but it's just not really that interesting to me. So I'm probably going to get a smaller brush and not worry about the bleeding and just do other things into it. Because I really did want to like pull out the space. And maybe I can do that with a smaller brush. I still want to hang on to this pattern. This kind of exploding pattern. But I want to just do more with this. So I'm probably just going to use the paint a lot thicker now. And try to see if it'll separate out the space a little more. It's uh tricky to do this the camera there and all and you know it's a little bit awkward and tr talking at the same time which I always like to do in YouTubes I especially like to bring out things that I, th I think are funny because I had a real funny dad a real funny husband and I just, I just love humor all the time and I saw something about glasses on Facebook that I liked a lot they said after a certain age, you're not going to be able to find all those pairs of glasses, including the ones on your head. Boy, is that ever true. As I was setting up today, I really thought I hadn't brought my glasses down here, and yes, they were on my head. So those of you who are really young, <laughs> something to think about. You're probably going to have trouble finding your glasses. Okay, now it's getting a lot more interesting to me. And I'm letting it kind of bleed too, which is interesting. Now some of these sections are kind of separating out. And that's what I wanted. I wanted the space to occur in the way that I put down the colors. And it's still bleeding, too. So I might keep it in that technique, or I might not. I'm just going to keep on reacting to the color and deciding as I go. I'm hoping my son doesn't come down. Because sometimes he does that, and I'm trying to work, and then he starts talking to me. It's a little bit awkward, <laughs> but I've just decided that if that happens, I'm just going to talk to him and answer his question, whatever he's talking about. YouTubes are supposed to be informal, or at least I, I think they're nicer when they're informal. Some people are really, they've got them like movies. It's amazing, and they're, they're cool too, but I, yeah, I prefer them kind of informal. So if he comes down here and starts talking to me, I'm just going to answer his question and keep going. Oh, yeah, okay, even though it's, I, I'm not getting it real thick, and I'm not really losing that pattern, I do like it a lot better. It's getting a lot more complicated. It's not what I had envisioned, but like I said, I never know about these YouTube ones. I have sort of an idea, but I never know because I'm just really experimenting. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's um, getting a lot more interesting to me. And I am, I'm, you know, I'm not really staying completely in these areas, but I am enough 
so that they're, they're still a part of the design, but um, not as much as they were. They're, you know, nebulous in areas, which I think is kind of nice, because real definite geometric patterns is not something that I'm really into. Okay. Hmm. I'm not sure what I'm going to do now. I, um, I think I might try to do a little more with the blue and the heavier so it'll stick out more because it's kind of just um, kind of sinking in. You can't see it very well. And maybe do that around in kind of like a circle to again emphasize this separation of space, which is what I wanted. Okay. I'm going to do a whole lot more. It's already 10 minutes. And I might not go back into that much either. I don't think I am going to build it up a lot. I think I'll just let it have this kind of nebulous bleeding quality into it. And still have the uh, kind of weird spiralous, spiral design. I'll get a little too thick. Better stop that. Yeah, there we go. I didn't want to get it too thick in there. Yeah. Yeah, I don't want to do what I normally do. I just really get to a super amount of brushwork and getting down to little tiny areas and everything. I'd, I'd rather let this one just kind of flow. So i got to watch that blue I've been putting in. I'm overdoing it here. I'm sure this makes a lot of sense. Well, if you work this way, if you did this, You'd start to understand what I'm talking about if you don't already. I'm gonna do a little bit more and then quit. And I really am gonna really do want to do another hand because I really like the way that last one turned out. It was real pleased, and like a lot of paintings, I didn't really like it that much afterwards. But boy, after a few days, I thought, wow, paintings are really weird that way. Um, the artist Pierre Bernard, famous 20th century colorist, after he did one, he turned that sucker to the wall because it's just really weird that what you see when you're done and what you see when you let it just kind of be by itself for a while, often two different things. You're just uh, so too caught up in it when you're working on it and sometimes you just have to just get away from it and then you, you just see it better. You see the strengths and not what was bugging you. Because uh, you really don't think anybody ever gets exactly what they want. I haven't used a lot of red here. I might put a little more red and then I'm going to quit because I'm getting to the end of it. But I, I do want it to spread around a little bit so I'm going to get some water here. Where my palette is getting so musty now. I mean, so mu messed up. Oh, I'm not going to do too much. I wonder if I can get some in there. Yeah, I'll just kind of connect these areas with a little red. It's getting kind of icky. Well, that's, that's what you call a real definite art term, icky. Uh, what I mean is it's getting kind of muddy. I really want it to be more red. Uh, that's okay. All right. Uh, I think I'm starting to get to the point where I'm, I'm losing it. I'm losing what I wanted. I'm, I'm starting to, what we say, overwork it. And so I think I'm going to just quit. I can always just wait till it dries and if I want to get those areas a little more red. So thank you very much for watching. The link to the final painting will be at the top of the description. Link to my Etsy site, link to my website, and my Wix site. Please be sure to check out my blog. I'm posting every day on Wix.